A theodolite is a precision instrument for measuring angles in the horizontal and vertical planes. Theodolites are used mainly for surveying applications, and have been adapted for specialized purposes in fields like meteorology and rocket launch technology. A modern theodolite consists of a movable telescope mounted within two perpendicular axes a euro the horizontal or trunnion axis, and the vertical axis. When the telescope is pointed at a target object, the angle of each of these axes can be measured with great precision, typically to seconds of arc. Theodolites may be either transit or non-transit. Transit theodolites are those in which the telescope can be inverted in the vertical plane, whereas the rotation in the same plane is restricted to a semicircle for non-transit theodolites. Some types of transit theodolites do not allow the measurement of vertical angles. The builder's level is sometimes mistaken for a transit theodolite, but it measures neither horizontal nor vertical angles. It uses a spirit level to set a telescope level to define a line of sight along a level plane. Concept of operation A theodolite is mounted on its tripod head by means of a forced centering plate or tri-bratch containing four thumb screws, or in modern theodolites, three for rapid leveling. Before use, a theodolite must be precisely placed vertical above the point to be measured using a plumb bob, optical plummet or laser plummet. The instrument is then set level using leveling foot screws and circular and more precise tubular spirit bubbles. Both axes of a theodolite are equipped with graduated circles that can be read through magnifying lenses. The vertical circle which transits about the horizontal axis should read 90 a degree when the sight axis is horizontal, or 270 a degree when the instrument is in its second position, that is, turned over, or plunged. Half of the difference between the two positions is called the index error. Errors in measurement, the horizontal and vertical axes of a theodolite must be perpendicular, if not then a horizontal axis error exists. This can be tested by aligning the tubular spirit bubble parallel to a line between two foot screws and setting the bubble central. A horizontal axis error is present if the bubble runs off central when the tubular spirit bubble is reversed. To adjust the operator removes one half the amount the bubble has run off using the adjusting screw, then re-level, test and refine the adjustment. The optical axis of the telescope, called the sight axis, defined by the optical center of the objective lens and the center of the crosshairs in its focal plane, must also be perpendicular to the horizontal axis. If not, then a collimation error exists. Index error Horizontal axis error and collimation error are regularly determined by calibration and are removed by mechanical adjustment. Their existence is taken into account in the choice of measurement procedure in order to eliminate their effect on the measurement results of the theodolite. History The term diopter was sometimes used in old texts as a synonym for theodolite. This derives from an older astronomical instrument called a dioptra. Prior to the theodolite, Instruments such as the geometric square and various graduated circles and semicircles were used to obtain either vertical or horizontal angle measurements. It was only a matter of time before someone put two measuring devices into a single instrument that could measure both angles simultaneously. Gregorius Rii showed such an instrument in the appendix of his book Margarita Philosophica, which he published in Strasbourg in 1512. It was described in the appendix by Martin Wolsey Emma one quarter Lair, a Rhineland topographer and cartographer, who made the device in the same year. Wolsey Emma one quarter Lair called his instrument the polymetrum. The first occurrence of the word theodolite is found in the surveying textbook A Geometric Practice Named Pantometria by Leonard Diggers, which was published posthumously by his son, Thomas Diggers. The etymology of the word is unknown. The first part of the new Latin theodelitus might stem from the Greek I I micro of three quarters paragraph I florin I I plus or minus I to the first, to behold or look attentively upon, or I I micro I I one half to run, but the second part is more puzzling and is often attributed to an unscholarly variation of one of the following Greek words, I A I I I, meaning evident, or clear, or I I I I to the first I O I long, or I I A I I slave, or an unattested. Ne Latin compound combining a one-half I I Y way, and I I to the first I I Y plane. 
It has been also suggested that delitus is a variation of the Latin supine delitus, in the sense of crossed out. There is some confusion about the instrument to which the name was originally applied. Some identify the early theodolite as an azimuth instrument only, while others specify it as an altazimuth instrument. In Diggers's book, the name theodolite described an instrument for measuring horizontal angles only. He also described an instrument that measured both altitude and azimuth, which he called a topographic call instrument, SIC. Thus the name originally applied only to the azimuth instrument and only later became associated with the altazimuth instrument. The 1728 Cyclopedia compares graphometer to half theodolite. Even as late as the 19th century, the instrument for measuring horizontal angles only was called a simple theodolite and the altazimuth instrument, the plain theodolite. The first instrument more like a true theodolite was likely the one built by Joshua Habermel in Germany in 1576, complete with compass and tripod. The earliest altazimuth instruments consisted of a base graduated with a full circle at the limb and a vertical angle measuring device, most often a semicircle. An alidade on the base was used to sight an object for horizontal angle measurement, and a second alidade was mounted on the vertical semicircle. Later instruments had a single alidade on the vertical semicircle and the entire semicircle was mounted so as to be used to indicate horizontal angles directly. Eventually, the simple, open sight alidade was replaced with a sighting telescope. This was first done by Jonathan Sisson in 1725. The theodolite became a modern, accurate instrument in 1787 with the introduction of Jesse Ramsden's famous Great Theodolite, which he created using a very accurate dividing engine of his own design. The demand could not be met by foreign theodolites owing to their inadequate precision, hence all instruments meeting high precision requirements were made in England. Despite the many German instrument builders at the turn of the century, there were no usable German theodolites available. A transition was brought about by Brea Thorpe and a symbiosis of used Schneider, Reichenbach and Fraunhofer. As technology progressed, in the 1840s, the vertical partial circle was replaced with a full circle, and both vertical and horizontal circles were finally graduated. This was the transit theodolite. Theodolites were later adapted to a wider variety of mountings and uses. In the 1870s, an interesting waterborne version of the theodolite was invented by Edward Samuel Ritchie. It was used by the U.S. Navy to take the first precision surveys of American harbors on the Atlantic and Gulf coasts. In the early part of the 20th century, Heinrich Wilde produced theodolites that became popular with surveyors. His Wilde T2, T3, and A1 instruments were made for many years, and he would go on to develop the DK1, DKM1, DM2. DKM2, and DKM3 for another company. With continuing refinements instruments steadily evolved into the modern theodolite used by surveyors today. Operation in surveying. Triangulation, as invented by Gemma Frisius around 1533, consists of making such direction plots of the surrounding landscape from two separate standpoints. The two graphing papers are superimposed, providing a scale model of the landscape or rather the targets in it. The true scale can be obtained by measuring one distance both in the real terrain and in the graphical representation. Modern triangulation as, for example, practiced by Snellius, is the same procedure executed by numerical means. Photogrammetric block adjustment of stereo pairs of aerial photographs is a modern, three-dimensional variant. In the late 1780s Jesse Ramsden, a Yorkshireman from Halifax, England who had developed the dividing engine for dividing angular scales accurately to within a second of arc, was commissioned to build a new instrument for the British Ordnance Survey. The Ramsden theodolite was used over the next few years to map the whole of southern Britain by triangulation. In network measurement, the use of forced centering speeds up operations while maintaining the highest precision. The theodolite or the target can be rapidly removed from, or socketed into, the force centering plate with sub and precision. Nowadays GPS antennas used for geodetic positioning use a similar mounting system. The height of the reference point of the theodolite a euro, or the target a euro above the ground benchmark must be measured precisely. 
The American Transit gained popularity during the 19th century with American railroad engineers pushing west. The transit replaced the railroad compass, sextant and octant and was distinguished by having a telescope shorter than the base arms, allowing the telescope to be vertically rotated past straight down. The transit had the ability to flip over on its vertical circle and easily show the exact 180-degree side to the user. This facilitated the viewing of long straight lines, such as when surveying the American West. Previously the user rotated the telescope on its horizontal circle to 180 and had to carefully check the angle when turning 180-degree turns. Use with weather balloons, there is a long history of theodolite use in measuring winds aloft, by using specially manufactured theodolites to track the horizontal and vertical angles of special weather balloons called ceiling balloons, or pilot balloons or pibble. Early attempts at this were made in the opening years of the 19th century, but the instruments and procedures weren't fully developed until a hundred years later. This method was extensively used in World War II and thereafter, and was gradually replaced by radio and GPS measuring systems from the 1980s onward. The Pibble theodolite uses a prism to bend the optical path by 90 degrees so the operator's eye position does not change as the elevation is changed through a complete 180 degrees. The theodolite is typically mounted on a rugged steel stand, set up so it is level and pointed north, with the altitude and azimuth scales reading 0 degrees. A balloon is released in front of the theodolite, and its position is precisely tracked, usually once a minute. The balloons are carefully constructed and filled, so their rate of ascent can be known fairly accurately in advance. Mathematical calculations on time, rate of ascent, azimuth and angular altitude can produce good estimates of wind speed and direction at various altitudes. Modern Theodolites In today's theodolites, the reading out of the horizontal and vertical circles is usually done electronically. The readout is done by a rotary encoder, which can be absolute, for example using gray codes, or incremental, using equidistant light and dark radial bands. In the latter case the circles spin rapidly, reducing angle measurement to electronic measurement of time differences. Additionally, lately CCD sensors have been added to the focal plane of the telescope allowing both auto-targeting and the automated measurement of residual target offset. All this is implemented in embedded software. Also, many modern theodolites, costing up to $10,000 a piece, are equipped with integrated electro-optical distance measuring devices, generally infrared-based, allowing the measurement in one go of complete three-dimensional vectors a euro albeit in instrument-defined polar coordinates, which can then be transformed to a pre-existing coordinate system in the area by means of a sufficient number of control points. This technique is called a resection solution or free station position surveying and is widely used in mapping surveying. The instruments, intelligent theodolites called self-registering tachyometers or total stations, perform the necessary operations, saving data into internal registering units, or into external data storage devices. Typically, rugged laptops or PDAs are used as data collectors for this purpose. Gyra theodolites a gyrotheodolite is used when the north-south reference bearing of the meridian is required in the absence of astronomical star sites. This occurs mainly in the underground mining industry and in tunnel engineering. For example, where a conduit must pass under a river, a vertical shaft on each side of the river might be connected by a horizontal tunnel. A gyrotheodolite can be operated at the surface and then again at the foot of the shafts to identify the directions needed to tunnel between the base of the two shafts. Unlike an artificial horizon or inertial navigation system, a gyrotheodolite cannot be relocated while it is operating. It must be restarted again at each site. The gyrotheodolite comprises a normal theodolite with an attachment that contains a gyroscope mounted so as to sense rotation of the Earth and from that the alignment of the meridian. The meridian is the plane that contains both the axis of the Earth a Euro unregistered trademark S rotation and the observer. The intersection of the meridian plane with the horizontal contains the true north-south geographic reference bearing required. The gyrotheodolite is usually referred to as being able to determine or find true north. 
a gyrotheodolite will function at the equator and in both the northern and southern hemispheres. The meridian is undefined at the geographic poles. A gyrotheodolite cannot be used at the poles where the Earth the Euro unregistered trademark S axis is precisely perpendicular to the horizontal axis of the spinner. Indeed it is not normally used within about 15 degrees of the pole because the east-west component of the Earth the Euro unregistered trademark S rotation is insufficient to obtain reliable results. When available, astronomical star sites are able to give the meridian bearing to better than 100 times the accuracy of the gyrotheodolite. Where this extra precision is not required, the gyrotheodolite is able to produce a result quickly without the need for night observations. See also, clinometer, dumpy level, Lierka geosystems, LIDAR, micrometer, plane table, Rankine's method, surveying, tachyometry, total station, tribrach, tripod, survey camp, temporary adjustments of theodolite, references.